the process of exothermic welding, and who can tell me where and what we would use it for in the electrical industry? Anybody? Quickly. Ground rods. Rounding. Yeah. We wanna we wanna have a, a good means of attachment for uh, a grounding conductor to a grounding electrode, right? Uh, and we might use as one of those grounding electrodes a ground rod. So what we're going to do is show you a means of attachment that's called exothermic welding. What other ways do we attach wires to a ground system? Right. Pressure connectors, mechanical connectors, uh, right? But what are they all subject to? Moisture, corrosion, Moisture, corrosion vibration. Eventually what's going to happen to them? They're going to loosen up, right? We're going to have a bad connection. We don't want to lose our ground. Why? So they get shocked. Well, shocked. It, it's a very important part of the system in regards to overcurrent protection. We don't have a ground system. Our overcurrent protection isn't going to operate properly. So uh, just that little bit of information would make you think, hey, I need to have a good ground connection. Well, exothermic welding is one way to ensure that if it's done properly. I'm not going to guarantee this to be proper, but we're going to try. So first thing you want to know is about it is that it's a welding process that's done from uh, the use of a mold, which is made from a graphite material, which obviously can what, withstand heat without changing its form. So the, the process of CAD welding involves, uh, I don't know the exact temperature, but uh, the uh, literature that I've read says that it'll reach temperatures which exceed the temperatures on the sun. So that's pretty hot, I think. And so first of all, safety-wise, you don't want to come into contact with anything like that, would you? No. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure we set the CAD weld mold up properly and that we're in a safe location when it's fired off or ignited, okay? Uh, just a, a quick little story about somebody who installed one of these molds and attached it to a beam because he was going to cad weld the wire to a beam. He had it up above him on an extension ladder about 20 feet up and had it clamped because he was going to tie the, the uh, ground wire to building steel. And at that time, they didn't have what we're going to use today as our igniter. We're going to use an electronic igniter. Uh, and it hadn't been developed yet, but we did have what they call a uh, striker. And he took the striker like this and held it up to the point of entry on the mold, which was a little bit different than this, fired it off. And because the mold wasn't installed properly, and it had some openings in it. When he fired it, the molten metal escaped the mold and poured down onto his stomach. Which immediately took him. Luckily, we were at a hospital, so he went right into surgery. And he survived, but it was a very serious injury. Okay, so you can see how this could really be dangerous if you put yourself in a wrong position, first of all. Second of all, not installing the mold properly would, could make it dangerous, all right? Uh, using means other than what the factory recommends to ignite the uh, uh, igniting fuel that you use to burn the, the metal wouldn't be recommended. But I'm sure whoever's worked around a CAD weld operation one time or another has struggled with igniting a CAD weld. And the shot are expensive. So uh, what I would recommend is if you ever get into a, a situation where you're going to use CAD weld, uh, find out what the shelf life is on the shot. Make sure you keep it in a dry area like they recommend. And uh, use it uh, as soon as possible so that your shot doesn't become uh, outdated, right? Uh, you want it to be able to fire off. If moisture's in it, it's not going to shoot. It's not going to weld properly. So, you can see uh, the way it's designed, the shot is installed up here in this chamber, and when it ignites, 
the metal, after it heats up and melts down, flows down this pathway. Here's where your ground rod would be installed, and this would be where your ground wire is installed in this position. So that when it's all clamped together and tightly sealed, you've got a nice mold where the molten metal can pour down onto the other objects you're trying to attach to, which of course, with a tremendous heat, is going to allow that metal to bond because it's going to heat up that metal you're going to attach to instantaneously. I didn't calculate all this out, but that's the way it works, okay? <coughs> so, what we're going to do is put this mold on this particular ground rod and clamp it. Now, because this is a little bit loose, what I'm going to do is take a C-clamp and put a little extra pressure on this mold. Not excessive pressure, but enough just to put uh, a tightening on this so there's no visible cracks in the mold, okay? You don't want to tighten it so much you can break the mold. Uh, if you drop one of these things, what will happen? Crack, break. Is it any good anymore? Most likely not. So you want to be very careful with them. They're expensive. Uh, if you're the contractor buying them, you'd realize that. If you're working for a contractor as an electrician, uh, he's going to expect you to take care of his equipment. Okay? Like how much? I've got expensive. that located. Well, I think uh, the molds range anywhere from like $50, $60 to over $100, depending. throw benders on them, throw all the other material on them, right? End of the day, we're done. Let's get out of here. Different applications. This is just a attachment to a, a ground rod, one wire, uh, one, a different size than what we have here. And they all come with a label on them telling you the size shot that's required and what it adapts to. So hopefully that will remain intact. That's what I mean about taking care of equipment, right? You want to take care of it. Here's what one of the shops looks like. They come like this in little canisters and they're labeled with the, the number. Okay. Uh, what you do when you install this type of a shot is there's a little silver disc. Right okay, when I broke it, there's an example of what not to do. That you drop in this chamber here and then you pour your shot in after you have everything set up. And at the very bottom of this canister is the powder that ignites, okay, gunpowder. And what you want to do is tap it all out into a little area that extends out to where your, uh, it, well, depending on the type of mold, some of the older molds have like an opening here where you can shoot the spark right in. This particular one has a chamber up at the top, so you want a little powder up here and directly underneath it, so you got like a trail shoot your igniter right into the mold like this. Rapid fire, you got enough spark in there, it ignites, fires off. Okay? Well, what we're going to show today is I've got one here that didn't fire and we're going to try to reuse it. If it doesn't fire, we're going to we'll uh, put another one in, but I want to try to use this one. This one here is used with an electronic starter. So it makes the whole operation a little bit easier. All you're going to do is set the shot in the, we don't have to install the little silver disc to keep the shot from pouring through before it's time. What happens, uh, you know, in a regular situation using the, uh, without the electronic igniter is that little disc instantly melts down and everything pours through, okay? Here we've got a container, same principle. It's going to hold everything until we need it. Uh, let's put our wire before we carry it away here. We won't have any welding on it. 
Another thing you want to do is make sure you're, you could, uh, in order to make everything optimal, is take a, they recommend taking a torch and heating your, uh, the, what you're welding and your mold up a little bit just to get it to a nice temperature. If it's real cold, you may, you may not have you know, the optimum weld, okay? Um, with the wire in place, let's take the igniter and attach it. Uh, first of all, we have our kind of safety glasses, right? right? Uh, I would recommend, if you're doing anything, I'm going to have to wash my hands here in a minute, to wear work gloves, right? My question. Go ahead. Seeing that the top is actually clamped on, what keeps it from blowing up, or is that kind of directed? Well, it, when you see what happens when we ignite it, you'll see it's just a, uh, it's not really a, a, an explosion. It shouldn't be unless there were uh, uh, some dampness in your kind shot. Like That's why you want it to stay kind of back from the right. It's going to be like a flash and instant heat and everything will follow the gravity. Okay? So at this point, what we want to do is attach electronic ignition. Now if this doesn't fire off, what we're going to do is take that one out and put another one on because uh, I tried this one earlier and it didn't work, so I, I wanted to have an example of something not working, or maybe it'll work. Well, it shouldn't go that far, so uh, I would always at least be ready to go the other direction in any type of <laughs> no matter what you're doing, right? Okay, so now let's push this one. It says ready, we should have ignition. Okay. So that was that was kind of painless, wasn't it? Uh, can you imagine what would happen if this were cracked open, though? You'd see a lot more metal on the floor, first of all. And if you were below that, it would not be good or near it if it got on you. So this is really hot right now. So what we want to do is uh, let it cool. I would recommend waiting a minute or two before you open it up. And uh, so what's the benefit of this? What's the benefit of this type of thing? Come well, first of all, it's ready for direct burial. It's not going to come loose. Okay? Uh, more or less, it's permanent. And that's what we're looking for in a ground system. We don't want to be able to have the ground wire come loose. First of all, we're going to have either a uh, failure of overcurrent protection. We could have uh, another unsafe situation would be something that's a metal part that's exposed become energized, no overcurrent protection because no ground system. Uh, somebody could come into contact with that energized piece of equipment and touch something that is grounded properly, like say a cold water pipe, and maybe it isn't bonded to your system. Next thing you know, you got somebody getting electrocuted, okay? So is grounding important? Yeah. It's one of the most important aspects of the electrical industry, okay, for safety. And that's what we're all about. Everything's built on that. 